sometimes the memory starts to fade. Sometimes some of the abilities start to leave them. But at the same time, they end up being treated as if that's it. You can't handle your bills and therefore you can't make any decisions whatsoever. And that's just not the case. Hi, this is Jeff Marsacci, the Plain English Attorney, and I'm an author, certified Medicaid planner, and an attorney with more than 25 years of experience running my own firm. You're at the number one place to learn about not only estate and Medicaid planning, but to get business, fitness, and general life success stories. I want to help estate planners and the general public get the tools and advice they need to stay safe, plan ahead, and enjoy life. Just another Friday, huh, George? Hi, this is Jeff Marsacci, the Plain English Attorney, and today I'm going to take you through some things that happen on Friday. It's, sometimes it's just the odds and ends stuff, and it's more about being the small business owner. But at the same time, there's a very interesting topic that I've been meaning to do a video on for a while, and it's regarding testamentary capacity versus just straight up capacity and responsibility. And the way I wanna really preface this and talk about this, uh, I really want you to consider when you have seniors, sometimes the memory starts to fade, sometimes some of the abilities start to leave them, but at the same time, they end up being treated as if that's it. You can't handle your bills and therefore you can't make any decisions whatsoever and that's just not the case. Uh, the fact is that capacity and competency to handle business affairs and things like that is a much higher threshold than what we call testamentary capacity. And I want you to think about it this way. If you've got somebody who can't drive anymore because of what their condition is and their age is, does that mean that they're not allowed to go into public anymore? No, no. And there is that big difference between capacity and testamentary capacity. You don't want to take away somebody's right to make decisions about who they want to be a power of attorney, who they want to be an executor, what they want to put into a will, what they want their wishes to be. That doesn't have to be affected by the fact that they can no longer organize and handle things like their bills on a monthly basis. I am actually the trustee on seven cases and only one of them is where I'm actively the trustee. So I'm the successor trustee on some other cases. And it's one of the last things that I necessarily want to do with my practice, but sometimes we have to handle things because our clients don't have anybody else. In this case, we need to make a deposit. So who goes and makes the deposits? This guy. Just another typical odds and ends things for a Friday. Okay, so what we're really dealing with is a four-part test for testamentary capacity. And the first one, it's nice and simple. Who are the, quote, natural objects of your bounty? Meaning, do you know who your kids are, who your closest living relatives are? If you know that, then you're meeting that first test. Okay, so part of what I have to do on this Friday is we've got some boxes that need to go to the storage unit. Now, while we're here, let's just say hello to Kiara. Hi. Kiara helps keep everything in the office running nice and smooth so that I can concentrate on actually doing all of the tough legal work, like taking boxes to storage. Okay, well, I am here at the bank. I'm about to make the deposit. I figured, all right, let me talk about the second 
thing for testamentary capacity, that the person needs to understand the kind nature and extent of their assets. So it doesn't mean that they have to have the account numbers memorized or know what exact balances are. It would kind of be enough to say, well, I know I've got a checking, savings, and money market at First U.S. National ABC Bank. Okay, and I know I've got a mutual fund at such and such brokerage firm, and I own my house, and I've got a vacation property. Okay, good enough. They don't need to understand the absolute specifics to meet this requirement on that second test. Okay, third thing, they know the manner in which they desire the act to take effect. Sounds a little convoluted, but what it basically means is, okay, they're signing this document because they want this person to do this, they want this asset to go here, and signing this is going to make it happen. So they kind of understand the gravity of what's going on. So that's really the third test that we're talking about towards Again, testamentary capacity. not contain originals. All right. so the fourth part of the test is do they understand what effect this is actually going to have on their estate? In other words, by signing this document, hey, we're cutting this person out and this other person is going to end up getting stuff. No, I don't want my son to be the executor anymore. I want my daughter to be the executor. So those are just some things in that fourth element of understanding what the effect is going to be on the estate. If they understand that, then that's the fourth part of the test. They've got it. So as you can see, having testamentary capacity is definitely not the same as being able to do some of these things that might be considered a little more complex. Taking care of your bills on a, on a, on a monthly basis, being able to drive, understanding and negotiating contracts and things like that, that's a, that's a higher bar, but it is, quote, capacity. Testamentary capacity is a bit of a lower bar. So even if someone is, quote, incapacitated, 
as long as they meet that minimum threshold, they've got testamentary capacity and they can execute these documents. So I hope you found that information useful. And as always, please stay safe, plan ahead, and enjoy life. Make it a great day. We hope you found that information useful and easy to understand. To keep getting this great information, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. To get even more information more quickly, follow the links below to some of our free, no obligation programs.